and ladies and germs, we are back. I'd like to point out that all of that has been a solid week of printing. When I mean a solid week of printing, I mean in hours. Legitimately a week. I'm doing this voiceover probably a good six weeks afterwards, but let's move on to actually update of what we've done, which is this. We have done half of this building, which is about two and a half feet long. I want to show you around a little bit, all these little side sections, these corner pieces, balconies, corner wall right on the end here. I want to bring some models in for some scale as well because it's a big old bit. As you can see, as our measurements, it's a bit of a big thing. So we're going to bring some stuff in for scale now. I decided to do a voiceover for this because it's just better than the phone camera. But there's your marine. He is somewhat dwarfed by this structure. We're going to bring in a bigger boy, still dwarfed. I'm going to go a bigger boy even still and put a leviathan here and yeah, this is a big structure. This is going to be plenty for doing a 4x4 board as you will see shortly because it's a lot. And a spartan of course, I forgot I added that. So yeah, it's a lot. And welcome to my kitchen and more importantly my kitchen island. One of the few things in my house that is big enough to have these wood sheets on it. Because these wood sheets are 4 by 4 feet so I could have some big old games on this. This is one of the only things that it would fit on. And what you see on said wooden tables is all the 3D stuff I've printed out so far. 3D files I should say I've printed out so far. I should redo that but I'm not going to. On the right you can see a free file that I downloaded which made me fall in love with stuff that this guy's been making over on Cult 3D, Thingiverse, all that fun stuff. And all of this is from a different set of files that he sold. He actually gave me a um, discount code for um, getting some different files which is a really nice thing to do seeing as like, I bought one thing from him and he went voucher. It's a really nice, really, really, really nice guy. What we're going to do now is take a little bit of a closer look at some of these prints so you can see the light layer lines and we can just have a little chat about these files a little bit more in depth. And here are said files a little bit more close up. This took three days to print. It is not a fast process. They are lovely but it's 3D printing. If you know FDM, you know FDM. Same with resin to be fair, it takes some time. So this took about three days but the print quality is really nice. If I can get the camera in focus, previous John, that would help. There you go. And we're just gonna get that in focus. There you go, previous John, do your job. There are layer lines, but they're not crazy. This is a 0.2 layer height with a 10% infill. You drop them, they bounce. Here is a painted example. Ooh, look at that, lovely. Very simple, grey outside, carrick stone, metallics, and some brass for the windows. The brass on the windows is our sake with a paintbrush. So I would suggest using an airbrush, but seeing as I don't have one, I won't do that yet, because I can't. Did a bit of weathering too. Don't know why I paused him, but enjoy the ramblings of a um, beardy ginger man who does not know how to do a voiceover. Anyway, I went on a tangent because 3D printing is fun, so Zone Mortalis became a thing for me. I did not know about Zone Mortalis previously when I left the hobby because it's probably about a year before Zone Mortalis was a thing. But I love Space Hulk and I love Aliens vs Predator. I love Aliens, so it seems like an obvious choice for me to do Zone Mortalis because it, there are lower point games, and that was something for me as somebody who doesn't like painting, or oh, sorry, doesn't like playing games without painted miniatures. It seemed really appealing. So this is an amazing idea. And I look forward to getting his own more talisman. But we're going to go back to the actual thing that we're talking about, these cities of death stuff. And here is all the extra little GW kits and bits and bobs that I have to add to it to fill it out. It's a bit much really for a 4x4, but we can scale to 6x4 and that's not the end of the world, is it really? And we have my Crash Aquila, which I started far too long ago, but not quite as long ago as when it came out. We also have some stuff at the back, we've got some containers, the containers are great fun. We have some more of the Crash Aquila, they're big pieces but again obscure terrain, they don't have to be um, non-passable etc. We've got some of the old gothic ruins dotted around here as you can see. Some little crates and bits and bobs that I've made as well out of MDF and just the GW little crate box things. But this has been 
a long time for printing, a long time for me wanting to do this. This is somewhat of a childhood dream to have a city to death board, and I think a lot of people would love to have a board like this or like the one um, Geek Gaming did recently. I mean, that thing's a monster, and this is un of a similar vein, to be fair, wanting to have a board that is very typically 2004 but i'm going to leave it there guys because i need to prime prime all this get part two made up i hope you're all enjoying your week your months your gaming peace the hands are roughly in time they can kind of ignore them because i'm not very good at narration so bye